Appendix of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Elizabeth Clett, Houston, Texas, June 2008. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, written by herself. By Harriet Jacobs, written under the pseudonym Linda Brent. Appendix. The following statement is from Amy Post, a member of the Society of Friends in the State of New York, well known and highly respected by friends of the poor and the oppressed. As has been already stated, in the preceding pages, the author of this volume spent some time under her hospitable roof. L. M. C. The author of this book is my highly esteemed friend. If its readers knew her as I know her, they could not fail to be deeply interested in her story. She was a beloved inmate of our family nearly the whole of the year 1849. She was introduced to us by her affectionate and conscientious brother, who had previously related to us some of the almost incredible events in his sister's life. I immediately became much interested in Linda, for her appearance was prepossessing, and her deportment indicated remarkable delicacy of feeling and purity of thought. As we became acquainted, she related to me from time to time some of the incidents in her bitter experiences as a slave-woman though impelled by a natural craving for human sympathy, she passed through a baptism of suffering, even in recounting her trials to me, in private confidential conversations. The burden of these memories lay heavily upon her spirit, naturally virtuous and refined. I repeatedly urged her to consent to the publication of her narrative, for I felt that it would arouse people to a more earnest work for the disenthrallment of millions still remaining in that soul-crushing condition which was so unendurable to her. But her sensitive spirit shrank from publicity. She said, "'You know a woman can whisper her cruel wrongs in the ear of a dear friend much easier than she can record them for the world to read. Even in talking with me, she wept so much and seemed to suffer such mental agony that I felt her story was too sacred to be drawn from her by inquisitive questions, and I left her free to tell as much or as little as she chose. Still I urged upon her the duty of publishing her experience, for the sake of the good it might do and at last she undertook the task. Having been a slave so large a portion of her life, she is unlearned. She is obliged to earn her living by her own labor, and she has worked untiringly to procure education for her children. Several times she has been obliged to leave her employments, in order to fly from the man-hunters and woman-hunters of our land. But she pressed through all these obstacles and overcame them. After the labors of the day were over, she traced secretly and wearily, by the midnight lamp, a truthful record of her eventful life. This Empire State is a shabby place of refuge for the oppressed. But here, through anxiety, turmoil, and despair, the freedom of Linda and her children was finally secured, by the exertions of a generous friend. She was grateful for the boon, but the idea of having been bought was always galling to a spirit that could never acknowledge itself to be a chattel. She wrote to us thus, soon after the event, I thank you for your kind expressions in regard to my freedom, but the freedom I had before the money was paid was dearer to me. God gave me that freedom, but man put God's image in the scales with the paltry sum of three hundred dollars. I served for my liberty as faithfully as Jacob served for Rachel. At the end he had large possessions, but I was robbed of my victory. I was obliged to resign my crown, to rid myself of a tyrant. Her story, as written by herself, cannot fail to interest the reader. It is a sad illustration of the condition of this country, which boasts of its civilization, while it sanctions laws and customs which make the experiences of the present more strange than any fictions of the past. Amy Post, Rochester, New York, October 30th, 1859 The following testimonial is from a man who is now a highly respectable colored citizen of Boston. L.M.C. This narrative contains some incidents so extraordinary, that doubtless many persons, under whose eyes it may chance to fall, will be ready to believe that it is coloured highly, to serve a special purpose. But however it may be regarded by the incredulous, I know that it is full of living truths. I have been well acquainted with the author from my boyhood. The circumstances recounted in her history are perfectly familiar to me. I knew of her treatment from her master, of the imprisonment of her children, of their sale and redemption of her seven years' concealment, and of her subsequent escape to the North. I am now a resident of Boston, and am a living witness to the truth of this interesting narrative. George W. Lowther End of Appendix End of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl